to Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we talked about possessions, which is, and today we're going to talk about walk-ins, which is similar but different. A walk-in, and this is the simplest explanation, is an earthbound spirit that enters an existing body once that body's own personal spirit has left. Sometimes it's surrendering of the body, like a suicide, which I personally think is the most times that something comes in. Um, it's fairly common at accidents. The person is brought back by EMS. There's an earthbound spirit there. They take advantage of an empty body and enter it. For those of you who watch Ghost Whisper, that's what happened to Jim. He, Melissa's husband, he got into another body and that's how the series continued then with him and looking totally different even though it was supposed to be Jim. And they did it wrong because if that had really happened, then Jim wouldn't have remembered he was Jim. So they messed that up really bad. Okay, this earthbound spirit that is in the body cannot be removed. They cannot leave on their own. That body has got to die again for that spirit to leave. When this happens, the body now has the personality, likes, dislikes of the earthbound spirit that is now in the body. It can even happen, it's rare, but it can happen where a woman will get into a man's dead body or vice versa, where a man will get into a woman's. From experience, the earthbound spirit that has taken over a body does not remember their own life or even remember taking over a body. They just totally think that's their body. But family and friends will chalk it up as, well, he was dead for five or six minutes, lack of oxygen. Um, that's why they don't remember anything. Liking food they never liked before or hating food that they used to love. Going to relations, houses they went to for years, now can't remember where or even who the people are. Going to work but not knowing how to do the job. Everyone thinks the brain must have been deprived of oxygen. That's why all the confusion. And they accept this. They just think this is the way he's going to be or she's going to be from now on. The first time I was aware what happened... A lady called and said she thought a ghost was bothering her 28-year-old son. Um, the son lived with her and her husband. She said her son was like a totally different person. She couldn't understand it. He was calling her Ma and his father Pa or Pop. They were always called Mother and Father. He had a degree in art. He also knew how to restore old masters' paintings and was employed by an art museum. He was very knowledgeable, but now he couldn't even draw a straight line with a ruler. He went into the garage when our mechanic was working on one of our cars, and somehow he told the mechanic what was wrong, and he was right. The mechanic was shocked. All he talks about is opening up a motorcycle garage and he wants one of the really and he wants to own one of those really big loud motorcycles. The whole time this lady was talking to me, I could see a 28 to 30 year old spirit in the house, clean cut, dressed in a shirt, a tie, dress slacks, probably buried in. And I'm, I'm looking at this clean-cut ghost, and I'm thinking this kid, her son, is being really out of sorts. How could this ghost be doing that to him? The whole time the lady was talking to me, this earthbound guy was really upset. I thought 
he was angry, she called and didn't want me to come over. But yet I did get the call. It wasn't stopped or blocked. I asked her how long has Junior been acting like this? She hesitated and then said, since his accident about a year and a half ago. I asked what kind of accident. She sort of hemmed and hawed and said he accidentally hung himself in the garage of the help. I thought, how do you accidentally hang yourself? And then I thought, the, I said, the help lives on the property? She goes, yes, they have their own quarters and they have a garage for their vehicles. And that is where it happened, in their garage. She said, our house man, and that's what she called him, lives on the property with his wife, who happens to be the cook, heard a noise in their attached garage. He was in his kitchen, when, which is right next door to the garage, and he ran out when he heard the noise. He went and saw our son struggling to breathe. When he finally got him down, he was not breathing. His wife called 911. He started chest compressions. EMS got there pretty fast and they jumped his heart. Maybe he was gone for seven or eight minutes where he was not breathing at all. He was in the hospital for four days. Our son could not remember how any of this happened. He swears he did not try to kill himself. I made an appointment to go to their house. When I rang the bell, and I guess it was the houseman that answered the door, he showed me to the library and said the Mr. and Mrs. would be in shortly. The parents showed up in the library without their son. Very nice couple. They said they wanted to talk to me before they brought Junior in. The mother almost repeated everything she had told talked to me on the phone. The father was a little standoffish. I don't know how he felt about me being there, but he was so worried about Junior, I think he would have tried anything. And it was going to make his wife feel better if I was there. Before they called Junior in, they apologized for his looks. His language, his long hair, his attitude in general, the clothes he had on, his tattoos, his piercings. They just, not, his, not their son at all. They summoned the house man, and I'm not even sure how they did that. I didn't see him push a buzzer or anything. The father asked when the house man showed up uh, to go get Junior and did he know where he was. The houseman said, yeah, he's in the garage. He's got the engine of a pickup truck torn apart. The father said, we've never owned a pickup truck. We don't have a pickup truck. Where'd the pickup truck come from? Houseman said he wasn't sure. It was just there in the morning. They told the house, they told houseman to bring him to us but make sure there's no grease or oil on his shoes. He already stained the carpet. This whole time, no ghost was anywhere around in this room. I knew he was on the property, but I didn't see him with us in the library. Then Junior walks in, very good looking. Yes, he was greasy looking, all stained, black t-shirt, he had a leather vest on, he had a chain hooked on his pants with keys hanging off of it. He said to his mother, you wanted to see me, Ma? She almost shook, she was so angry when he said that. She said, Junior, please call me Mother. He said, sorry, I forgot again. He was very polite to me. His speech was not what you would expect in this setting. Um, then it happened. The earthbound spirit walked in. 
Not too much surprises me anymore, but this was Junior, the earthbound spirit, standing right next to his body. Luckily, I don't have to speak out loud. I said, are you Junior? He said, hell yes. And this, and he pointed to the other Junior, is not me. I just sort of sat there. I wasn't quite sure what I'm supposed to do at this point. I was very successful. I did hang myself. I wish John, the house man's name, didn't get me down so fast. Maybe this imposter wouldn't be in my body. He is making my mother and father miserable. He's not very educated. He's a grease monkey, a little snobby, because in all honesty, Ted was a mechanic, and I like mechanics. Father and I used to golf four to five times a month at the club. This guy doesn't even know what different golf clubs are supposed to be used. My father is so upset when I turn 30, I'm to receive my trust fund over half a million dollars. Father tried to do paperwork with him and the accountant. He sat there like he understood everything the accountant was saying, how the money should be divided, where it should go to earn more money. And at the end, he said to my father, Okay, so when I turn 30, I can buy a motorcycle garage and repair motorcycles for my work. I swear if my father had had a bad heart, a bad heart that would have killed him. The walk-in, Junior was getting antsy and said he could go, uh, the walk-in, Junior, was getting antsy and he asked if he could go back out to the garage. I said, sure, didn't make any difference, he could go. And his parents, well, the mother and father looked at me and I said, we're fine, we could talk without him. They said, okay. So now I'm trying to figure out how to tell Junior's parents that he is dead. That really is not my job description. And I did ask Junior, why did you hang yourself? He just found out the girl he was dating for two years broke up with him. And three weeks later, she was engaged to his best friend. So he put two and two together. This all didn't happen in just three weeks. After all, his, all of his education and his degrees, he didn't like his job. He actually hated his job. But his parents were so proud of him working at the museum, he hated it, but I didn't want to be a disappointment to them. I'm their only child. He was still living at home with his parents, and yeah, he did have his own wing, but he was still in the same house. He was almost 30 and wanted his own place. But he said, I couldn't do that to my mother. <sighs> And I asked him, why didn't you leave a note? That would have helped. He said, I did leave a note. But John, the houseman, saw it and he took it away. And I'm not sure why. And he never did show it to my mother and father. He can't stay in this house. He can't get my trust fund. My parents don't deserve this. You've got to do something. He's got to go. They know what they don't know what to say to people. No job. Working on cars. Forget how to play golf. I really feel if he stays around, my parents will commit suicide. My paternal grandfather also committed suicide. So I think it runs in the family. His father said, What do you think? Is there a ghost? hanging around Junior. His mother said, I don't know what else to do if it's not a ghost. I started. 
yes, there is a ghost here. And this is very hard for me to tell you. But I will try and I will try to show you proof that what I'm saying is true. His father said, proof of what? I said, proof that your son is dead. They both just stared at me. Mother said, what are you saying? You just met Junior. I said, I met Junior's body, but his spirit is not in his body. It's a walk-in. And I explained what a walk-in is. When he succeeded hanging himself, they said together, no. I said, yes. Ask John, your houseman, what he did with the junior's suicide note. Father said, wait, how did you know our houseman's name was John? I said, your son told me. He said, oh. I said, your son's spirit told me you're right there. I can't read my own writing. His father stammered, I can't understand or believe what you're saying. So I explained again how this happened. I asked Junior the ghost to tell me something that only him and his parents knew so I could give them proof that it was really him. The father stood up and said, we will pay for your time, but I can't believe this. We would like you to leave. Mother said, no, no, let's hear her out. I looked at Junior and I said, start talking. He went golfing last summer that he was alive at the club with his father. And I lost two balls in the water and you got a hole in one on the ninth hole. Father looked at mother and said, did that make the newspapers? She said, I don't really know. And I looked at Junior and I said, tell me something else. Okay, when I was 11, we went fishing on your partner's boat. Caught no fish. We stopped at the fish market. You bought fish and we told mother we caught it. And it was our secret. And to my knowledge, mother never ever found out. And mother looked up and she said, I did not know you bought the fish. And father just stood there. He didn't say anything. He just stared at me. I said, what about to Junior? I said, what about your mother? He said, oh, this will get her. When I was seven years old, we had worked all day on a gingerbread house for Christmas. When I was seven years old, I came downstairs and I ate all the gumdrops off the roof. Mother started crying. She said, that's exactly what he did. And nobody knew that. I'm sorry, but you said your son succeeded when he hung himself. And he is not sorry. And he said he would do it again, but not when John, the houseman, was at home. He said, I felt that was the only way for me to get peace. I'm sorry for your pain, but I had to do it. His parents were devastated. And how to get rid of an imposter that looks like their son. That was going to have to be their job, not mine. Junior was so relieved that his parents knew the truth. They said some personal things to each other. and made the white light and Junior went into it. I told him, come back in their dreams as soon as you can and talk to them about this. I left and I don't know what happened. When even with proof, I don't think they were 100% convinced. At least at the time, I didn't think they were. I felt really bad for them. I get rid of earthbound spirits. I don't like telling people their loved ones are dead. About eight months later, I got a referral from John's father, or from Junior's father. So maybe 
they figured it out. Maybe the walk-in junior is gone. Maybe they kicked him out. I don't know. It really was none of my business. And hopefully life is better for them. I've done six or seven walk-ins. They were all devastating in my opinion. And very, very sad. I don't know. I wish. I just wish that if everybody carried a Quincy, this would not happen to them. This is very common when people, this happens a lot too in hospitals when people are unconscious. That's why I tell people if you're having any kind of surgery in a hospital, make sure you have your Quincy taped to your big toe so that if something happens in the operating room, it won't be a walk-in. So that sort of explains the possession and walk-ins. Again, they are far and few between. It's not something that's common, thank God. I didn't really want this to go on a resume that I take care of walk-ins because I, I don't really like doing this. So, but at least you know the difference and you know what to look for. And if you've ever had a relative or a friend that had attempted suicide and they're different, that may be the reason why. Okay, thanks very much. And I know I'm over on this one. Sorry about that. But I thought it was important that you should at least know the difference between a possession and walk-ins. Thanks. Have a great week.